Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the iPhone 13 mini camera and we're going to go through the settings, tips and tricks so that you can get the most out of your iPhone 13 camera. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is open the camera and you can do that with the camera app here. You can also open it using the control center right there. Either way, it'll take you to the camera app and it should open to the photos section. Now we're going to start with photos and we're going to work our way across just by swiping here on all the different options that are available. We're also going to go over tips, tricks, settings, features, and everything that you can do with this. So if you do want to skip ahead, there are chapter timestamps in the description so you can learn exactly what you want. But I strongly recommend you watch the entire video because there's a lot to learn here. Now first, like I said, we're gonna start with photos. And taking a photo is extremely simple. You just align your camera to whatever you wanna take a photo of, and then just tap on this little shutter button at the bottom. When you do that, you'll see a preview appears at the bottom left, you can tap on it, and you can see the photo where you'll be able to share it, add it as a favorite, get information, edit the photo, or trash it. Now, we're gonna go over editing in another video. The link to that video is in the description, but when you do tap on it, you can do things like change the exposure, change the brightness, add highlights. You can even draw on the photo, resize it over here. There's so much to it, but if you wanna learn, like I said, the video for that is in the description. To go back, you just tap the back button right there, and you're back to your camera app. Now taking a great photo involves more than just pointing and shooting. You can actually do a lot with this camera. So to focus on what you want, for example, you just tap and you'll see a little focus icon appear. If you wanna focus on the background, we'll tap on that. You can see how the background is now in focus and our subject at the front is sort of blurred out. So tapping to focus is a great way to ensure that your subjects are in focus. Additionally, you can swipe up and down. You'll see that the exposure changes from brighter to a darker exposure. So you can set that as well. And when you're happy with where you're focused in on and your exposure, you can then take your photo. To remove all of this, you just tap away. Most of the time it removes after you've taken the photo. You also have zooms right here. And with the iPhone 13 and iPhone 13 mini, you have a 0.5 ultra wide zoom. So it's gonna zoom out. And then you have the one time zoom. You can use two fingers to pinch to zoom as well. Just keep in mind that if you do zoom in past the one times, it's going to be a digital zoom. And that means that the quality or the graininess of the photo is going to get worse and worse as you increase that zoom. So it's better to get closer to the subject rather than zoom in. And if ever you want to lock the focus in on something, because if I do focus on the background, for example, but I do move around, you'll see the autofocus removes that for me. So if you want to make sure that your focus is locked, you can tap and hold on the screen. It'll lock it. Now if I move around, the focus will stay in place. I can then take my photo and to remove the locked focus, I just tap away anywhere and it's back to the autofocus. So those are basic settings that you can use to take photos with the photo section here. Now, each one of these sections at the bottom has its own options that you can add as well. And to access them, you either swipe up or you tap the arrow right here. So in this case, we have the arrow, so we'll tap on that. And these are all the options we have available to us. The first one is a simple one. It's just adding a flash to your photo. So if you're in darker situations or in a situation where a flash would benefit, you can turn it on, off, or have it to set to auto. Now, I'll just turn it on and take a photo and you can see how it sort of flashes in the background, works pretty simple, but when it's on, you'll notice that it turns yellow, and any setting you turn on down here will appear at the top in yellow. So to turn it off, you would come back here, turn it off, or set it back to auto, which is what I leave it on most of the time. The next option is live, and these are live photos that'll actually take a second and a half before your photo and a second and a half after your photo and create a live effect. To give you an example of this, I'm just going to move the duck around like this, and we're just going to tap to take a picture. Now if we tap the preview, tap our finger and hold, you can see the duck is moving and we have that effect. This is great for different types of photos, whether you're taking a photo of a lake or even if you have a group photo, because if you tap the edit button on a live photo, 
and tap the live section down here, you can actually choose the exact moment through those time frames where it was recording live and get the perfect photo. So just to give you an example, if there was a lot of people in the photo and a few people were blinking, you can move this around until you find the keyframe where everybody wasn't blinking and then you tap make key photo. Now you have that perfect photo where everybody wasn't blinking and smiling at the same time. We'll tap to go back. So just keep in mind though, if you do use live photos and send them to people, they'll be able to see and hear whatever was going on in that live photo. So if you do decide to send it using the share button here, and you can see it check marks it, just tap on that live right there. It'll give it a slash. Now it'll just be a set photo. The live won't be sent to them either. Just to keep uh, that in mind as you might want to make sure you're not saying something you shouldn't in one of those photos. The next option here we have is photographic styles. And by default, it's set to standard. And when you first open your camera app, it asks you to choose what you wanna use. You can always change these here and you can see the different effects that you can have. That's just going to basically set up the look or the feel of your photo before you even take it. And even within these, you can actually tap on them and just move the sliders around to customize them if you want. But for the most part, I leave it on standard unless there's a specific situation to switch it. This option here is going to allow us to resize or change the size of our photo. So by default, it's four by three. We do have a 16 by nine, and then we have a square one by one. So if you're using these for Instagram or eBay, the square is great. Otherwise, I usually leave mine just on the standard four by three. The next option here is an exposure. So if you wanna set the exposure before your photo's taken, you can see the slider, what it does, darken, brighten, the exposure just like that. Set it to where you want, and that way when you take your photo, it's already preset and it won't change based on the situation. Next is a timer. Pretty self-explanatory. If you have a group of people or you just wanna take a photo with a timer so you have some time to get in the frame, you have three seconds or 10 seconds. We turn it on here, see it appears at the top. We tap, get a little timer at the bottom here, and it takes our photo. Just make sure if you do turn this on, you do turn it off. Otherwise, your next photo is going to also have that timer and you might miss that moment. The last setting here is filters. And this has been around for a while. And if you've used Instagram or any application these days that has to do with your camera, filters are involved and you can choose them, have them set before you take your photo. You can also add these in later in the editor. But if you want to set them, just choose it and then take your photo like normal. So those are the options that are available to you in the photos. And one thing you're probably seeing on my screen is this set of lines. This is actually the grid, and I'll talk about that in the settings. I like to use it. If you don't see it, I'll show you how to enable it a little bit later. But once we're done here on the photos, let's actually close out these options, and we're gonna swipe to the right and talk about video. Now in video, you can do pretty much the same stuff you could in your photos. So you can take your video just by tapping on this record button. It takes the video. You have all your zooms, your tap to focus and all that good stuff. To bring up the options from here, you just swipe upwards and they pop up down here. You only have a light, which now it does say flash, but when you turn it on, it's a light. You can see that there's a light on. If I turn it off, you'll see that it turns off. So if you need a light on while you're taking your video, you can turn it on there, and then you have your exposure controls right there. Other than that, the only option that does change within the video section is at the top right. You can see the quality that you're taking your video in. It's at 720 at 30. You can tap on the uh, frame rate at the right as well. So we'll just set it to HD, which is 1080p, and now we can switch to 60. We can also shoot in 4K at 60 or 30 as well, 24 and 30. So if you do wanna set your quality of your video, you can tap around up there. Keep in mind, 4K is gonna use the most, 60 frames per second is gonna use the most memory, and then obviously 720 and 30 frames per second is gonna use the least amount of your storage. So depending on your situation, you wanna just set that up as well, and then you can just take your video like you would, and at the bottom right, you'll notice that we do have a little shutter button. If you tap on this, it'll take a photo within the video that you can actually have there as well. So if you wanna capture a specific still moment, you tap that and it'll do so. Now, when you do finish recording, you do have a preview here. And when you tap your preview, it plays automatically. You can see the little dial is moving. There wasn't much happening in this video, but you can see it moving down there. You have editing options and sharing options. You can pause it. 
turn the volume on and off, your information, all the same stuff, very similar, except this one is going to run in video. Again, if you do want to learn how to edit videos and photos, there's a link in the description to that full tutorial that'll teach you how to do so. Moving on, we're going to swipe to portrait, and this is one of the most popular modes with the iPhone. It's creating a blurred out background effect, which is called the portrait mode, and you can set this up very easily here. So first off, you want your subject in a position where it can actually take advantage of this. It's a little bit hard for me here because you can see it's saying move further away. I've got the duck now in a little bit better position. I mean, the table is not giving it the best effect, but you get to see the idea how the background is blurred out. And you have options right here. These are your lighting. So by default, it's set to natural, but you can change it to a studio light, a contour light, a stage light, stage light mono, and even in high key light mono. And no matter which one you do choose, after you take the photo, you can actually edit and switch it to any one of these lighting effects anyway. So don't feel like if you take one in one, you might be missing out. You can always change it after. So basically we take our photo, we just wanna to tap to focus. If we bring up our other options, we can tap right there. We have all the same that we had with the Photos app, except one extra here. If we tap on that, that's the F-stop, so the depth of field. So if we move all the way to the left, you'll see that we have no blur in the background, whereas if we move all the way to the right, it's a heavy blur in the background. So you just set this to where you want. I'm just gonna leave it as is, and then you take your photo like normal. Now, like I said, you can change all of those effects. So we just look at the preview. You can see it says portrait, but if you tap edit here, you can change those and have the look of what it was in each one of those different modes. So again, you don't feel like you're missing out. If you do take it in one of those options, you can always change it later. Moving back over now to cinematic. This is a video mode that's brand new for the iPhones here, and it's very similar to portrait mode photos, except now it's in a cinematic video effect. So it's giving you the same effect as portrait mode did with photos, but in video. So I can actually move my camera and you can see it's creating that portrait mode effect, but I can record a video with that. So the same similar options, we're just gonna pull up to bring up our options. We have our light, we have our exposure, and we have our depth of field controls where we can turn them off or you know make them very prominent. So we'll take a quick video here. I'll take a video and I'll kind of move around here just like that. You can see it always keeps the duck in focus there and in that portrait mode effect. Tap stop, we tap here, we have that effect here and you can see it says cinematic where the duck is in that moment of being sort of blurred out background in the center stage of what's going on. Now, in this case, you don't have all those lighting effects to play around with, but you do have that blurred background effect, which is really cool and a lot of people like to use it. Moving over one more is a slow motion effect, and this is basically going to turn your video into a slow motion video. Similarly to video, you have options at the top right. So you can shoot at HD at 240, or HD at 120 here. Those are the two options you have. So depending on what you wanna do, 240 will be slower, 120 will be a little bit faster. And I'll give you a quick example of how this looks. So I'll just kind of throw this duck right here into the other duck. We'll tap and we'll just throw the duck in there, land it on his feet, tap stop. If we tap the preview, this is what it looks like. So it's a really cool effect, and if you use your imagination or just think of sporting events and things like that, action shots, how good they can actually look just by using that slow motion effect. Over one more, we have time lapse, and this is almost the reverse of a slow motion effect. Basically, it's going to speed up. So when you tap to take your video, whatever's happening, say you leave this on a table or on a tripod for an hour, it's going to turn the video, as you can see on screen, into a very fast moving event. So whether it's clouds moving, snow falling, cars driving by, you use your creativity to make this time-lapse effect really look cool. Now we'll move all the way back over to the pano section, and this is a panoramic photo. And this is allowing you to capture more of what's in your shot than what you see specifically right here, right now. First, you wanna set up all your same things. So if you pull up, you have no options with this. You do have the zoom options available to you and you can move this to the left or to the right. So basically you're moving the camera like this or like this, depending on where you put it. You just follow the arrow. 
So let's actually keep it where it was. And you can see on my screen what we have in my phone camera. We have just the ducks and we have uh, the little case over there. But if I actually use this mode, we can capture all of this stuff down there as well, the messy room, but uh, don't mind that. We'll tap, we'll start moving across here, trying to keep it as level as possible. And we'll tap stop. Now, if we tap our preview, we can see our panoramic photo captured all of that, the bookshelf, the table, everything. And you have to be very steady with this because you can see it kind of angled it upwards because I curved, I think, at the end. But you can really capture a whole really good city scene or a sunset. It really has some cool effects. And all it takes is a little bit of a steady hand and your imagination on how you want to use it to get that effect. But that's pretty much how it works. And I don't find that a lot of people use it mainly because they don't know how. Now we'll move quickly over to photo here one more time. And there is another option and that's to flip to the front facing camera. So if we do that, you can see here, you can see me. You're getting all of the same options, whether it's portrait, pano is only rear facing camera, but you see we have this little option down there for all the options, photo, video, cinematic mode, we can use the front facing camera as well. Keep in mind the front facing camera is not nearly as good as the rear facing. So only use the front facing camera when it's absolutely needed. But you have the options just the same. You'll notice this one right here, this uh, little icon beside the flash, that's actually night mode. It's there on the rear camera as well, but it only pops up when it notices that you need sort of a darker or a help with darker situations. So if I pull up for our options and tap on it, you can see what it'll do for the dark mode. I'll just quickly take a photo. You kind of have to wait that one second so that I can grab as much light as possible. And that way you get that night mode effect. And this is really good. And I strongly recommend you try using this in a dark situation at night or outside just to see how it works for you. But like I showed you earlier, all these options are very much the same depending on what option or video that you're in. You can see they're pretty much the same with the front facing camera as well. So that's how you access the two cameras. But let's get into some of the iPhone 13 camera settings now because there's a lot to that as well. And for this, all you wanna do is open up your settings application here. And you wanna start typing in camera at the top. And when you see camera appear, just tap on it. These are all the settings within your camera. Starting from the top, we have the formats. And as it stands for me, I leave it on high efficiency. Basically what this does, it takes your photos in this HEIF, HEVC format. This you'll have to decide what's most important to you because some computers, if you transfer your photos over to it, have a hard time downloading them or even viewing them. I think it's getting better as the time passes, but if you need something more compatible, you can choose most compatible, which will take your photos in a standard JPEG style. Keep in mind, cinematic video, 4K at 60 frames per second, 1080 at 240 frames per second, and HDR video require the high efficiency. So you're losing a lot by choosing the most compatible. So decide based on your situation. The next one is record video. So where do you want it to start? What do you want it to be on when you do open your camera app is going to depend on where you select here. Usually I choose 1080p at 30 or I'll choose 1080 at 60. I don't really leave it on the 4K just because it uses so much more space on the phone. But you can choose which one you want it to be on when you do open that camera app. That way it's there already and you don't have to actually tap at that top right to switch it up. You can see how much space it's going to use down here when you take those videos. So decide again based on your phone and your situation. The next option is show PAL formats. This is a television video format that's used in many countries in Europe, Africa, Asia, South America. So if it applies to you, turn it on. If not, keep it off. The HDR video, this records up to 60 frames per second video in 10 bit high dynamic range, including Dolby Vision. Now this is a really popular feature. You can turn it on and off and see how you like it or see if it makes a difference to you. Keep in mind that if you turn this on and then you upload it to different computers or programs that can't support it, you're gonna get a really overexposed and bright video that looks really hard to see. So definitely test that for yourself first and then decide if you want it on or off. 
auto FPS, so auto 30 FPS, automatically reduce the frame rate to improve low light video and to optimize file size. So you have some options here off 30, 30 and 60 frames per second. I leave it on 30 auto, but you can read right here what it does and decide if you want to change that as well. Lastly, we have the lock the camera because this has two cameras, you can choose to have it not automatically switch between the cameras while it's recording because it actually does do that. So if you want it to just stick with one camera, regardless of the situation, you turn that on, it won't flip between the two cameras. I leave mine like this just because I like the way it works. Next, we have the record slow-mo, same thing. You have those two options, 1080 at 240, 1080 at 120. So if you want it to start at the 120 because you like your slow motions a little bit faster and you don't want to use as much memory on your phone, you then choose that option. Otherwise, just leave it where it is. I like it at 240. I prefer it a little slower, but that's what we have to work with. Record stereo sound is on. I don't know why anybody would turn it off. There are probably specific reasons. I leave it on. I like the stereo sound. Preserve settings. This one here will allow you to set the settings so that way you don't always have to turn them on. Basically, it's going to save the last setting in all of these modes. That way, when you open your camera app again, it's gonna stay in that mode. So for example, let's open our camera app here and we'll leave it on portrait mode. Now, if I close the camera app because I have this on here, it's gonna open in portrait mode when I open the camera app again. So we'll open the camera app and it opens in portrait mode because that was the last option I had open. If I don't have this setting on, it's gonna open back up in the standard photo section. And it works the same for your creative controls, exposure, and night mode. So if you want all of those on based on what you used last, you'll turn them on. Otherwise, you leave them off. I don't even play around with this. I guess I had this one on for whatever reason, so I'll just leave it like that. Use volume up for burst. I'll talk about that in the tip section. Scan QR codes. This is great, so if you do come across QR codes, there's one on screen so you know what they look like. You can just basically scan your phone over them. It'll pop up with a notification. You can tap on it and it'll open up the web page. Show detected text. Again, I'll show you that in the tips. Grid, that's what you saw earlier for me. Uh, when you open the camera app, that is the grid. So you have those lines there and it's something to do with the rule of thirds. I don't know 100% uh, the reason or what the whole point of that is. I'm not really super into photography, but basically I use it to keep uh, everything sort of, you know, straight in my photo. So I know that they're in those blocks. I don't know. Use it the way you want. I mean, it does have a real purpose though. Mirroring the front camera. This is a tip, but we'll show it right now. So in the camera app, when you flip to the front facing camera, if you take your photo, you can see my hand right there is on the left side. I take my photo. If I look at the preview, it's on the right side. That's what happens. And the reason is because you can see that the writing on my camera here, Rode, it's straight. So that if I look at the photo, it says Rode, it says Sony, it's not backwards. If I mirror my front camera and I go back into my camera app here, I take my photo with my hand on the left. Now, if I open it, it's not gonna flip it. So that means that the road sign is backwards, the Sony is backwards, but I'm the way you saw it when you took the photo. So choose how you want to have your photo to be set up. I don't have that on, a lot of people do. And it's uh, one of the biggest questions I get asked the most on my channel. View outside the frame, you probably saw this throughout the video when I was in my camera app, I cannot figure this out for the life of me. I've been getting so many people to try to help me figure out what this was, but I can't even see how when I zoom in just a bit, you can see outside the frame. I thought you could actually uh, edit this later and zoom out. You can't. It's basically from what everybody's telling me is just to show you where you're framed. That way, if you're moving around, you know what's in frame. So now I know the duck is in frame. Whereas if I had it like this, some of him is missing. Uh, I still kind of don't get it 100%, but that's, you can see what it does. And uh, again, anybody in the comments that wants to try to explain it to me again, feel free, but I keep getting confused with that. I really think that we should have been able to edit outside the frame, but that's not the case. I leave it on. The photographic styles, I showed you that earlier in the video where you can switch between all of those different styles. You can tap here to get more information on how those styles will work and work within your camera. So if you do wanna change them in that way, it's always set there. 
you can change it right here from the iPhone 13 camera settings. The next one is prioritize fast shooting. This is going to intelligently adapt image quality when rapidly pressing the shutter. I leave this on and I also leave on the lens correction, which is going to correct the lens distortion on front and ultra wide cameras. So it's just good stuff to have on unless you specifically don't want it on, then you can turn it off for yourself. So those are the iPhone 13 camera settings. Let's get into some of the iPhone 13 mini tips and tricks now. And we're gonna start with the ones that were in the settings here, just so that we don't have to move around so much. So the first one was show detected text. So with that option turned on, if we go into our camera app here and anything with text appears on screen, for example, this page here, you can see it can grab this text. It's gonna create this border around the text. You can see it right there. And if we tap on this little icon down here, it's going to pull that text up. And now we can see the text. So whether you're driving by a sign or if you have something on paper that you just don't wanna write out or just ha not have it as a photo, we can actually copy this right here. We can open our notes app. And from our notes app here, if we tap, and paste, it's gonna paste it all written out in actual text. So it saves us time from writing it out, and this way we have it with us wherever we're going. So it's a cool feature that Apple added with iOS 15. It's there, I keep it on just in case. If you find that it gets annoying though, that's where you're gonna to go to turn it off, because sometimes it does interrupt your photos if there is words within your photo. Now using volume up for burst, I'm gonna turn this on and we'll show you first how you take a burst photo. So in the camera app here, in your photo section, if you ever wanna take a burst photo, what you're gonna do is tap on the camera app and then swipe left. And you're gonna see it's gonna take all those photos in like, what was it, maybe half a second? If we tap on the preview, you can see 23 photos taken in burst mode. And personally, I use these burst photos mainly for action shots to capture all the different moments if someone's jumping or kicking a ball or something like that. And you can really play around with these photos. You can see you can tap select and you can go through each individual one and really capture exactly that moment. So it's really cool. I like to use it. And the option that we enabled here in the settings, use volume up for burst, when you turn that on, you can actually use the volume up rocker here. So if you wanna press that volume up rocker here, it's going to create that situation where it bursts photos. So you're pressing and holding to do that. Also, you can use your phone in this um, landscape mode, same way. And that way you can take those landscape photos and videos as well, depending on what you're using your camera for, whether it's YouTube or Instagram or anything like that, choose whether it's in portrait mode like this or the landscape mode. Now tying in with this same feature, you use the shutter button to go left to do burst photos, but if you pull the shutter button right, you can actually take a quick take video. So if you're in your photos app, you've opened it up, something's happening, you wanna grab a video, just swipe to the right here, it's gonna start a quick take video, and then you can let go, it'll continue recording, tap stop, it'll stop the video. So if you ever need to take a quick take video, that's how you do it. Additionally here, if we then grab our camera and we use the volume down, if we press on that, it's going to take the quick uh, take video as well. And when you release it, it'll stop the video. Now, just some general tips and tricks when you're taking photos. A lot of people always ask me why they're grainy, why they're dark. First off, again, if you're zoomed in, you're gonna make grainy photos. Zooming in is never the best way to capture your photos. Try and get as close as you can and then use zoom only if it's necessary. Also, good lighting is very important. And not only that, you don't want the light flashing into the camera. You don't want it flashing towards it. You kind of want it on the subject. So pointing at the subject is best. That way it's lighting them and not behind them. If you have the light pointing at the camera, it kind of makes everything dark and it's really hard to work with. So try to have the lighting, you know, on the subjects. Natural lighting is best. And then if you want a better photo personally, um, I see a lot of uh, people on Instagram. So here's the duck. If I take the duck's photo, you know, at this level, it kind of looks like that. But I find that if you take photos a little bit up, above the subject and pointing down a little bit, it creates more of a slimming effect. So keep that in mind as well for whatever you'd wanna use that for. And then also you have your editing options. So like I showed you at the beginning, tap, set up your photo with the pinch to zoom, tap to focus, all the options. And then you also have your editor in your preview here where you can modify things as well. 
So that is it for the iPhone 13 camera tutorial with the tips, tricks, and everything you need to know on how to use your iPhone 13 mini camera. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below. I'm happy to help you out. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and click the bell notification box to be notified when I post new videos. That way it pops up on your phone and you can be the first one to comment on the video. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.